That's right, the My Pillow CEO. Well, he desperately really wants Bill Barr and the January 6th committee to hear his election fraud evidence. That's right, Mike Lindell has evidence of election fraud. But apparently, no one is going to give him the time of day. This is so incredibly strange because I would think people would be running to Mike Lindell for all of his insight and knowledge. So yeah, take a look at his most recent appearance on Steve Bannon's podcast. Has the committee reached out to you to go through all the voluminous material you have about the election of 3 November 2020, sir, yes or no? No, they haven't, and it's really, and that's sad too, because I've offered, I love to come to your little committee as long as you nationally televise it there, Ms. Pelosi. Okay, fine, number one, so they're, they're too gutless to get the information you have. Has Bill Barr ever reached out to you to ask any questions given all the high profile did you have about this, about anything that you found in regard to election fraud in the last two years, sir? No, and he's actually avoided me, Steve. I mean, I've put out stuff, you know, hey, tried to get stuff to him in the past and it's a complete block. Yeah, yeah, it looks like Mike Lindell is definitely doing his best to ensure that all of his election fraud evidence is out there. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Waz, does, does it seem like that we're really missing out? No, not at all. I feel bad for, for Mike because it's just unrequited love. It's almost single white female-esque the way this guy is just stalking Bill Barr. He's like, please pay attention to me. Look at my evidence. Would you just give me a call once? And Bill Barr has not returned the favor. It's, it's sad, Mike, it's sad. I, I, how could you not want you know the the <laughs> what a picture! How could you not want the undivided attention of Bill Barr? I, I see it. I I get the pain and frustration in his eyes, Adrian. Yeah, you know what? I feel like there is oh well, there's at least always pain and frustration in my eyes anytime I'm watching Mike Lindell or hearing him. Uh, you know, he's just utter tomfoolery, and I definitely know Bill Barr sees that. You know, he saw it in Donald Trump, but Donald Trump was his boss at the time, and it definitely I'm getting the sense that Bill Barr is just not here for any of it anymore. He's like, I've moved on. I'm working at a major law firm. I'm bringing in probably a million dollars a year in terms of salary. I'm doing a lot better than working in the government. I don't need to deal with any of you insurrectionists or any of you crackpots anymore. So I really think that Bill Barr essentially is, he's beyond it, he's not dealing with it. And also him ignoring Lindell really should not definitely come as a surprise. As we know with the videotape testimony before the hearing in terms of the January 6th committee, Barr made a point to rebuff any claims of election fraud, literally calling it BS when it comes to Trump's lies. I had three discussions with the president that I can recall. One was on November 23rd, one was on December 1st, and one was on December 14th. And I've been through sort of the give and take of those discussions. And in that context, I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bull. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to be a part of it, and that's one of the reasons that went into me deciding to leave when I did. I observed, uh, I think it was on December 1st, that, you know, how can we, you can't live in a world where, where the incumbent administration stays in power based on its view, unsupported by specific evidence, that the election, that there was fraud in the election. Yeah, I, I don't know. I heard that loud and clear uh, in watching the January 6th hearing last week. And it really seems that though Mike Lindell didn't hear it. But of course, you know, Lindell's not here to give up. Uh, you know, he's been financing costs for a new feature length film that he happens to claim will definitively prove that Trump's election uh, fraud conspiracies are true, not conspiracies at all, but actual truth. Yes. So, you know, he also really loves to give insane rants about the premiere of this new movie. And so Lindell says that uh, is that his uh, that if his political opponents really don't change their minds after watching it, that they should be imprisoned. Yeah, he thinks that it's <laughs> going to change everything. Check it out. It's going to change everything, and I'll tell you, all the influencers are there invited, thousands of podcasters and TV hosts, radio hosts, that this is gonna be the voice of the world. I'm gonna, Brandon, I'm gonna invite people from overseas, big organization, 
that have a big influence on the world. They're the ones that are gonna be there. And they're gonna be handpicked, I'm picking them, they're gonna be there and they're gonna put out their voice. And you know what? After those two days, if there's any politician left in the United States that says there was no election crime and that they really are in love with those machines, they can sit behind those melted down prison bars made from those machines right next to Brad Rassenberger. We can build a whole big old new prison for all the people that were part of the election crime. Ist das nicht beeindruckend? Menschen und Technologien stellen sich selbst den größten Herausforderungen und wir helfen. Yeah, yeah, this man, this man, I probably, he just needs a lot of help. Uh, also, especially because he's still currently facing that $1.3 billion defamation lawsuit uh, from Dominion voting systems. It, it just seems that he is completely whack and out of it. And you know, if he happens to lose that lawsuit, that bankruptcy law experts think that it's possible that it will be his downfall. That's right. And that it'll get all his assets, and yet he continues to invest in backing Trump. I just, I don't understand where all of this nonsense and tomfoolery drives people. What is it about Trump that people want to put their entire livelihoods on the line for this man who has no loyalty to them whatsoever? I, I, I do not understand it, Waz. You know, <clears throat> yeah, there's a lack of loyalty, but I think what people see is that if you flatter Trump even in the, the smallest amount of way, you can be, your career can be advanced by it. You can be at the seat of power. And I think this dude, you know, he's seeing he's seeing dollar signs. He sees that Trump is basically, you know, a Republican nomination away. And if he gets the nomination, he's got a basically an even shot at becoming president. Again, it's not that hard to to, to do the math and be like, well, if I can, you know, sort of build up my bona fides as a as a Trump uh, supporter and and a flag waver, he probably thinks he can get a seat a seat at the table. So many grifters of you know questionable talent have been able to do so in the past. So he's taking the Trump grift lottery um, for a spin himself, and 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 I get it honestly. Yeah, I just don't think it's particularly smart, especially because we've seen so many people already go down, uh, you know, mm. losing their law license, their livelihoods. Uh, Giuliani's pretty much bankrupt. Uh, you know, he's doing these little shows that are uh, that were <laughs> arguably beneath him. Like these people are hanging on by a thread, all because they were suckling at the teat of Trump. And it's like, really, what what is it done for you other than ruin your entire life? And yet these people continue. To, to stay on, it's so cultish, it's just so ugh, and strange and weird. And also we have to watch these people uh, embarrass themselves on TV. I just, I don't understand it, I don't get it, but I know it's very dangerous and sad. Yeah, I actually enjoyed that last clip because I grew up watching wrestling and it reminded me of a wrestling promo. Like that was like Piper's Pit. That was as good as Shawn Michaels. That was as good as, as anything I've ever seen in a wrestling promo. So that, that, he's got that utility, Adrian. He's he's a good he's good on the mic. Yeah, well, you know, maybe that'll be a way he can make money after Dominion voting ends up taking all of his worth and just takes him down to bankruptcy. Uh, yeah, it'll be very interesting. Uh, the new wrestler, yeah, Mike Lindell.